Good afternoon and welcome to this Stalls TV Live Classroom. I'm Zach Ellsworth, your host for today. And our class today is called More Items, More Profits, How to Make More Money Using Just Your Heat Press. So you can see a little bit of the items that are laid out in front of me today. Today's class is basically going to be walking through how to load these items. We'll be printing quite a few items as well. It's actually quite warm in this room because we have three heat presses going. So hope you enjoy the class and you learn something from it. We do have a couple polls set up for you today just to learn a little bit about who we are talking to uh, this afternoon. So the first poll that we're going to launch has to do with the t-shirt sales and how they relate to your business. How much of your business is actually made up of t-shirt sales? Karen is going to launch that poll now and it says t-shirt sales make up whatever percentage, X percentage of my business. Less than 25%, 25 to 50, 50 to 75, or 75 plus percent of my sales can be attributed to t-shirts alone because today's class is really looking at more than just t-shirts. So I'll give you a couple more seconds to fill out that poll just to where we get an idea of who is watching. Okay, we'll close that down. Karen, what kind of results did we get? 14% answered less than 25% of my business, 19% okay. 25 to 50%, 29% said 50 to 75%, and 38% <coughs> said greater than 75% of their business. Okay, so we see, uh, I think we find that the majority of our viewers today, uh, have, most of their business is made up of t-shirt sales, 50% or more, there was more than 50% of you on that side. So hopefully we'll be able to show you folks some other things that you can print using just the heat press that you already have uh, in-house. And actually, uh, if you have any questions throughout today's presentation, there is a chat window in the bottom right-hand corner of your GoToMeeting client that you're watching on. You can simply chat your questions in there and we'll take breaks throughout today's broadcast to answer those questions for you. So I want to get right into printing items. So we're going to move to the Hotronics Fusion Press. And the first few items that we're going to pick up here from the table, I have, I'm going to grab my prints here, and we'll talk a little bit more about exactly what everything is made of and how we're doing application. But the first item that we're going to be applying is this performance hoodie. So we're going to take this over to the press, and this is more than just t-shirts. Not only is it not just a cotton uh, or a fleece hoodie, you're talking, this is a Sandmar Sport Tech garment. We're applying a size large, and we're going to go over to the Fusion Press, which we have set up at 280 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 seconds. We're at 280 degrees because of the nature of the fabric that we're going to be applying to. This performance hoodie needs a low application temperature. So we're just going to thread this hoodie onto our 16 by 20 platen, doing our best to get the seams kind of out of the way there. All right, and I'm going to go back to the table and grab my prints. All right, Karen, if you want to shoot to the over the top look there for us, we can see what we're going to be applying. So. I actually, Karen did a great job of cutting these uh, prints for us today. So this is made out of CAD Cut Premium Plus. And I'm just going to lay the whole thing out on the garment before we get into pressing to where you kind of get a visual of what we're going to be making here. One thing that our owner at Stalls, Ted Stahl, always says is that artwork sells t-shirts. Well, we're going to be showing you some pretty nice artwork and designs here today to put on items that are more than just t-shirts. You can take a look at that. That is a premium plus design. We have Riverside Football, the year, and the mascot. Some of our larger customers in the sporting goods industry say that there's three extremely important things that every graphic should communicate when it comes to high school uh, or college sports. And it should communicate the sport, it should communicate the school name and also the mascot. And you can do that in some creative ways here. You have the sport spelled out as well as showing a football. So we have two ways to do that. We have our mascot in the form of clip art as well as in silver wolves here in text. And then we also have our school up top. So we have all three of those major categories covered. So the best way to apply this design on this hoodie, I'm going to take the largest section of the design first and apply it by itself because we can't apply everything at the same time. Um, with this premium plus material. So I'm going to remove all of this extra stuff and I'm just going to apply the black first. All right, so center this up. Center my hoodie on the heat press. 
and that should, just because I moved it a little bit, I'm going to make sure that leaves us enough room at the top of the design. Yes, it will. Great. All right. One of the nice things about selling hoodies in addition to t-shirts is that depending on your climate and the area of the country that you live in, hoodies can be worn year-round and that's not just necessarily in the cooler climates. In the warmer climates like uh, Southern California, every time we visit there people have hoodies on because they get cold all the time. So we're gonna let this cool down just a little bit. We're gonna do a warm peel on the Premium Plus here. Give it a second. All right, Peel that section up. All right. And we had football at the top of the design. And we're going to do all the blue and I'm going to come back and pick up the white on that in just a second because it is supposed to go over blue. All right, silver walls, we'll do the best we can at centering that. And then I'm also going to throw the 2016 in here at the bottom of the football. Now I'm going to use a craft paper cover sheet to cover this up because I don't want these open portions of the film being touched by the heat press. So I'm just going to cover that up and we're going to apply for the recommended time and temperature, 280 degrees for 10 to 12 seconds. Let me back this down to 10 seconds. One of the other nice things about adding hoodies to your line in addition to t-shirts, most t-shirts, depending on if you're screen printing or what type of design you're putting on top of them, t-shirts are going to sell anywhere from $8 probably all the way up to $20 depending on the quantity. When you're looking at performance hoodies, you're automatically increasing not only your sales price but your profit because on a t-shirt you're making anywhere from $5 to probably $10 or $15. On a hoodie, your minimum profit is probably going to be closer to the $12 to $20 range when selling a hoodie. So it's a good reason to upgrade. A lot of athletes will also choose to wear hoodies on the practice field or shortly thereafter when they're working out just to uh, induce a better workout. All right, and we're going to apply our last piece here, Riverton which is going to fall right in between the football text. Okay. Pick my cover sheet up there. All right. So 10 more seconds and this garment will be complete. And we're gonna move after we do this hoodie to a matching set because what we want to do is to sell more than just t-shirts, even more than just hoodies, we can sell matching sets and bundle to where when you walk into a store, uh, a retail store or a fashion store, most of the time you end up buying what they show you on the rack that goes with the top or that goes with the bottom. It makes it a lot easier for you to do your shopping. So we want to do that for our customers as well. So we have a hoodie with royal blue, black, and white premium plus on it, a performance hoodie. We also have the ability now to sell the same customer a matching set of pants. So we can come here. These are performance polyester pants. Again, from Sanmar, this is the Ogeo brand. And we are going to apply a four color CAD cut design on our left pocket. So one of the ways that we are able to print more items with the heat press that we already own is to invest in optional platens. So we have another poll question for you, just a quick one that says, how many optional platens do you currently own? Do you own any optional platens at all? Do you have one to two, three to four, or five plus optional platens? So Karen's gonna launch that for us now again to see how, how many of you actually have the ability to print more items than just t-shirts on your heat press because the key to doing that um, is not only being able to sell those additional items but it's going to be able to produce those. So we'll give you just a couple seconds on that. 
All right, we'll close down that poll and ask Karen to read us the results. 50% have no optional platens, 25% mm -hmm. have one to two, 14% three to four, and 11% five or more. Okay, so most of us don't have any optional platens for the heat press. So one of the keys that you should take from this class, and you'll see it as we kind of go throughout, we started pressing on a 16 by 20 platen for that hoodie. And this is typically what comes with your heat press unless you buy a smaller size one. But most folks invest in a 16 by 20 platen. And the reason that we recommend that you do that is because it gives you the option to print the widest variety of graphics. You can print larger graphics with a 16 by 20 platen. However, it's not always good for all of the different items that uh, are able to be heat printed. So one of the things that we're going to do is change out platens uh, quite a few times here today. Our first change is going to happen right now. And I'm going to step to the other side of the Fusion and release the, um, the lever that is underneath the Fusion press to pull the 16 by 20 platen off. This is called our quick change platen because you can simply pull it out. There's no tools required to change the platens out, which was an innovation that uh, Stahl's made probably it's probably been four or five years ago now that that has happened. And for these particular pants, I'm going to grab a four by four platen to where we can thread the pocket right onto the platen. So I have a four inch by four inch size. And you can see there on the camera that this uh, silicone pad is actually raised off of the side. And that's to keep our heat print area above the platen. So I'm going to lock that back in. All right. Get rid of some of this garbage and we will grab our pants. All right, I mentioned already that we have, Karen, if you wanna to go to the overhead, that would be great. Mentioned already that we have a pocket, so we want to see if this pocket is going to fit over that four by four platen. That would be the idea. Let's see here. No, I don't think it's gonna work. So, what we're gonna do instead is simply lay the print area on top because we don't need to go inside of that pocket. But what I don't want to do is put a 16 by 20 heat press mark on these pans. I don't want to mark from the heat press all the way down here when my application area is up here. So we're just going to put that right on there, make sure we don't have any wrinkles underneath of it, which it actually feels like I do. So I'm going to fix that. All right. And we're going to give a quick preheat here just to make sure we have flat application area and I'm going to adjust the pressure just a little bit there we go okay so I get a flat application area and I am grabbing my print so I have four different pieces for this matching pant and you'll notice when we put these pieces back together it's going to be the same mascot that was on the hoodie to sell the matching set so I'm going to put our I'm going to have to register these regardless. So I think I'm going to put my white down first. And the reason that I'm picking the white is because it's the biggest surface area. So it has the most margin uh, of error. I can adjust my smaller areas much easier around the larger one than I can the larger around the small. So I'm going to choose to do the white first. Right. And we're going to do 280 at 10 seconds. Now, one of the things that you want to account for when you switch to a smaller platen, the machine is still giving the same amount of pressure from the center out. We have an over the center pressure adjustment on these Hotronics machines. So when you're giving a three um, on your pressure readout that happens right here, when you're giving a three on the pressure readout on a 16 by 20 platen, it's significantly less pressure than a three on this small four by four platen because it is not being pushed out across the same surface area. So if your material calls for a medium pressure, and you're on a 16 by 20 platen, medium pressure is going to be four to six. When you drop down to this four by four size, a medium pressure is really going to be more in the two to three range, just because it's being spread out across a much smaller area. So I'm going to line my black piece up. All right. Now, the reason I'm not going to use a cover sheet on this particular application is because my carrier sheet is covering up all of the white, so there's no need to use a cover sheet. I don't have any of the Premium Plus film exposed, right? 
So I know you can't necessarily see the screen, but right now I'm on a zero pressure that it's reading out, but I can feel with my hand that it feels like a two or three when I lock it down. All right, so we're gonna wait for that to cool just a second. All right, and peel that away. And now we're gonna line up our blue. on one side of the graphic, and then also our silver on the other side. All right, I don't think that I can do them both at the same time. What's going to happen, the reason that I can't is because this um, is going to overlap with the cover sheet, and I don't want it to stick to the cover sheet. I need it to stick to the garment. So I'm gonna grab my cover sheet over here to protect that small piece that is currently uncovered and bring this over. All right, so we did have um, in our poll a small percentage of you folks who own more than five optional platens. I would actually be interested to know if you can start chatting some of the things in which one, which optional platen you use the most often. For those of you who have um, more than one optional platen, which one is your favorite to use? Which one do you use the most often? And we'll, this isn't necessarily a formal poll that we're launching for you, but if you can chat some of that information in, I'm just interested to know, and I think some of our other viewers would be interested to know, which Platin, if they're going to invest in one, has been the best investment for you. So I invite you to chat that in to us right now as we apply this last color of silver on these pants. And then as we get some of those, Karen, you can kind of chat those in. So we have 10 seconds on this last color. After we get done with the Premium Plus, we are going to move to a different press and show you sublimation. Now, one thing that we want to mention, we said you can print more items with just your heat press. We don't have the luxury of a full day's production time uh, here in our 45 minute class. So we have multiple presses here to press multiple processes. Our Premium Plus is applying at 300 degrees. We're gonna show you some sublimation transfers that actually apply at 385 degrees. And also some fashion film, which applies at um, 320 degrees. So I'm gonna make that adjustment now on the Fusion. All right. So on the Fusion heat press to change the temperature, we can just use our stylus here and we're going to push it up to 300 degrees for an application that we're going to come back and do later. And in the meantime, we're going to move to another press and show you how to print some more items. But let me put this hoodie and these sweatpants back together for you. All right. So we have same graphic, same clip art hanging out on both shirts here. So this warm-up set, if you were selling this uh, retail, you're probably going to pick up upwards $80 to $100 for this set that you would sell at retail. To your wholesale customers, you could probably sell it at $50 to $70, and it would be a great fundraiser item for them to sell to their athletes and their fans to uh, wear to the game in the stands or even wear at practice. So we have our performance hoodie and performance sweatpants. So let's move to our next application, and we'll come back and review some of that information as well. Any questions coming in at all, Karen, before we move to the next one? Someone would like to know if they can use the interchangeable platens on their Hotronics Auto Open Press. Uh, can you use the interchangeable platens on the Hotronics Auto Open Press? Uh, the answer is yes, if it has the quick change capability, which again, if you bought the press within the last, I want to say three years, uh, odds are it does have that quick change lower platen. If there is a lever, a gray handled lever on the bottom of the press, yes, you can use the platens that we're using today. If there's not, there, um, I don't think that they make the, uh, the old interchangeable platens anymore with the old fitting on the bottom. So um, you would probably need to upgrade your auto open press to one of the newer versions that's come out in the past three years. Okay, is that it for questions? All right. So the next application is one that's kind of taken off uh, in the sports market, and it's really being driven by athletes, people seeing professional athletes wearing these things. So this is an arm sleeve. And it is definitely outside the realm of t-shirts. It's a, another performance item. And you literally just wear it 
on your arm. I won't stretch it out too much before we apply it, but that's it. Athletes are going to pull it up, wear it on their arm for game time. This is great for, um, it's most prevalent or most noticeable in basketball, uh, but they're also using these in football and baseball as well. So we have two arm sleeves and we have a sublimation transfer that's going to apply to each one to where when a wearer puts their arms together, it's going to put the design together, which is a really hot trend in gloves that Nike kind of pioneered with the Oregon Ducks, and it's also becoming a trend in these arm sleeves as well. So we're going to go over to our Max Press to do this sublimation transfer. All right, so on this particular press, we are looking at the 16 by 20 plat, and this does have the gray lever underneath, so I can change this out if necessary for today's application. I don't need to do that, but I will need a cover sheet for our sublimation transfer. Just lay back on this table for a second while I get loaded up. All right, so we're going to lay the sleeves out. Now, a lot of folks do the sleeves on both sides to where they're getting a wraparound print. One uh, word of advice if you are designing for that to do a wraparound print, don't do anything that requires exact registration. Most people do just big large images that kind of fill the whole thing and you don't notice where you're connecting the front and the back of the sleeve. For today's purposes we actually have a CAD prints sublimation transfer. So you can order a CAD print sublimation transfer at stalls.com if you're interested in trying out sublimation sleeves. The sleeves themselves came from a company called Vapor Apparel. It's a 100% polyester sleeve that's designed specifically for the sublimation process. Something else that's really hot in sublimation specific to the sublimation process is also socks, uh, but we're going to show you how to do the sleeves today. All right, so we want to put that on the edge. I'm going to get it on the edge of the design without going all the way over because I don't want to get it on my press. One of the things with uh, sublimation transfers is the really high temperature that's required. I mentioned it to you already, but we're going to apply today at 385 degrees because sublimation is actually a chemical process that takes place where the ink turns into a gas and then turns back into a solid to get into our items. All right. Okay, we're just going to go for it and see what happens. Registration is difficult on this one. All right, so I'm going to get my cover sheet because I don't want this ink that's going to turn into a gas to get up on top of my heat press platen because it will not come off. So you always want to use a cover sheet when you're doing sublimation transfers. And this particular application requires uh, a light pressure, but it's for 35 seconds. So 35 seconds for that ink to turn into a gas, to get into those polyester arm sleeves. And when you're doing sublimation, you definitely have to be applying to polyester. 100% polyester items are recommended, uh, which is definitely outside the realm of t-shirts, but you can sublimate on items as low as 65% polyester. Um, you can actually sublimate on items as low as 1% polyester, but the more polyester content, the more vibrant the print is going to be. So normally industry standard, is something that's 65% polyester just to get the colors out of the transfer that you would be looking for. All right, so extraordinarily hot because we're at 385, right? And as you can see here, the transfer, the ink actually went onto our cover sheet. So you want to buy inexpensive cover sheets that are disposable uh, for the sublimation process because you don't want to use this again. When this reheats, if it's on something that's polyester, that ink will go into the polyester content on the next thing that we apply. But we have sublimated our arm sleeves. And we have 17 there with half. And we see our players are running back here as well. So I won't put those on right now because they're scorching hot, but I may try them on later if we get enough votes in for me to try them on, but we'll see. Okay, all right, so let's go back to, we'll take this back to the main table with our other items and see what's up next. Any questions come in at all, uh, Karen, during that particular process? All right, I'm going to take a quick drink of coffee and then we're going to keep, keep on keeping on. Okay, so up next, we're going to print 
a cap. And for this, you do need an additional press from your regular heat press. You do need a cap press. However, with just a cap press, you can print all different types of items from uh, t-shirts and other items that require left chest logos to sleeve logos um, to all different types of things, even just all different types of caps. I'll show you a few different kinds, including a visor um, as well, and how you would load that. So the logo that we came up with today, we're in a city, Stalls TV Studios is in a city called Uniontown. And we always come up with just generic logos or generic school names that we're using. So um, the guys in the office here at Stalls TV decided to come up with the Uniontown Unicorns. And they're calling them the double U's. Although we're just putting two U's and not the letter W. So that's a little inside joke that you guys get to be in on. But we're going to head over to the cap press and apply this cap using two layers of fashion film. We're going to talk about a few differences with this application of fashion film on this particular hat as well. On the Premium Plus, over on the hoodie and on the sweatpants, you probably remember that we did the full application time of 10 seconds for every color that we were doing. On the fashion film material, because it has a sticky carrier on it, it is a hot, um, a hot peel product. So we can actually apply the first layer of color for only two to three seconds and then put our additional layers on top for two to three seconds until we get our last layer. So we'll show you how to do that. But fashion film is great for those multicolor applications where you want to make it quicker and not take up the full time. However, the reason that we use Premium Plus on those other items and not fashion film was because it required a low heat application. We applied at 280. Here, we're going to be applying at 300 degrees on our cap. So to load the cap press, we go in from the back side here, and there is a lever on the right hand side that is going to catch inside of the cap and actually draw it down tight onto the platen. So we just have a little red lever over there that we're pulling down, and we want to get that as flat as we possibly can. And same thing, same theory applies here on the cap press as applied on the 16 by 20 press. Because we're dealing with a smaller area, it doesn't require quite as much pressure as you might think on the 16 by 20. Okay. Karen, which color did you recommend we apply first? Mm -hmm. The purple. No, the, the, purple yeah. the purple. Okay. So we're going to apply the one with more surface area first, and we're going to go for a side application here, just assuming that it's going to stick. All right, great. All right. So fashion film is a 10 second application and we're only going to do a couple seconds there on that to release and place our other color so we can see we can hot peel that. That is going to stick and stay on the cap and I am going to put our white layer around it and register it. I'm going to try and do the best job that I can here. All right, and we're going to apply that down for the full 10 second application. And when that's done, we will have a nice two color decorated cap here that can add on to that hoodie or sweatpants sale as well. So our auto cap is an auto open. All right. I didn't do an excellent job on registration, but it's okay. Not terrible, right? All right, so in addition to not only are there optional platens for the flat presses, there are also optional platens for the cap presses as well because there are different curvatures in your caps. There are a, di a number of different panels available in your caps. If you're applying a visor, you don't have that six panel look that you have to deal with here in the middle and you can use a much smaller platen. And then like if you get into uh, fishing hats or hats like this, you can use a different platen as well. So to change the platen on your cap press, it's actually even easier than the quick change lever on your flat press. You can just pull this out. There's no lever holding it in, and you drop your next one right into it. Okay, so we can load that on there. And I'm actually not going to apply anything to this one. But you can see that that smaller platen fits perfectly between the seams on this particular hat. So we have a seam at the top. We have a seam at the bottom and that smaller platen fits right in between there to where we don't have the seams in the way of our application. All right, we're going to take our decorated cap back over to the table and we're going to move on to the next item that is more than just pressing a t-shirt. All right, any questions or notes come in, Karen? All right, you guys are quiet today, which is okay. We're going to get our garbage out of the way. 
Next thing that we're moving on to after the t-shirt uh, and we've, we've dealt pretty much with apparel items to this point. Now we're going to move on to pressing a bag and a pair of shoes. So we do have additional video content available at StylesTV.com if you want to learn uh, specifics about all the different types of bags or how to press different types of shoes, you can visit StallsTV.com and find additional content there. Today, we are going to be applying a cotton bag. I'm going to use an 8x10 platen that kind of matches up with our Uniontown Unicorns design here that's a two color. And I'm going to leave the shoes here and come back for those in a little bit. So our bag is going to be applied with fashion film. So fashion film is a CAD cut material. If you own a vinyl cutter, you can order this or the premium plus material that we already looked at in rolls and cut your own designs. Everything, I'm pretty sure everything that you see here designed today was made using CADWorks Live online designer. So that's CADWorksLive.com. It's a free design software provided by Stalls with free clip art and templates that you can use to design your own items as well. You can also use Corel Draw or Adobe Illustrator to create vector graphics to send to your vinyl cutter or to send to stalls to custom cut for you. Um, in addition to these CAD cut transfers, you can also use screen print heat transfers on all of the items that we've pressed so far today. Transfer Express has different formulas for the fabric content that we have printed. So on the polyester, you would be looking at elastoprints. On the cotton, you would be looking at either goof proof or hot split transfers. So you have an option either way, whether you want to do film or vinyl or whether you want to do screen printed transfers to do everything that we've done so far today. All right, so we're going to move over to the fusion press with our bag and fashion film transfer. And based on the size of the bag, we are going to change our 4x4 platen out and go with an 8x10 platen. Just take a few seconds here to do that. Right, is that as big as our design? Let's make sure. It is not. Okay. All right, so what else can we do? Let's try an 11 by 15 platen. All right, lock that in. And we will take a look at our bag here. Can we thread our bag? I don't think so. Okay, Karen's looking for another platen here that we can use. You know what, Karen? I think I grabbed the wrong one. I'm sorry. Okay, I grabbed the 6x10 platen. Let me try this 8x10. For those of you who own five or more platens, if you can tell the difference just by looking between your 6x10 and 8x10, you will have done better than me today. And I'm going to put it this way. One of the nice things about these, these uh, 8x10, 6x10, and 11x15 is you can put them portrait or landscape, depending on which one is going to make the most sense for your design or the item that you're trying to press. This bag is uh, pretty tight. It wouldn't fit on our 11x15, even the 11 inches wide. So let's see if it fits on our 8x10, and it does. All right. So the reason that I'm threading this on here is because I have these straps and this zipper on the back of the bag, and I don't want that in our application area. So threadability is really a helpful and key thing for accurate applications on items outside of t-shirts. All of the heat presses built throughout the 70s, 80s, and 90s were kind of built specifically for t-shirt application. Here uh, in the 2000s, we're, we're looking outside of t-shirts and building technology that allows you to press more than just that. So we have this bag. We're going to throw our design on here. See that it fits, awesome. We're gonna give a quick pre-press on this to eliminate any moisture and wrinkles that are in it. And I'm gonna back my pressure back down. Okay. So before you press any item, you definitely need to adjust the pressure outside of the air fusion machine. If anybody owns an air fusion or a dual air fusion where you can set the air pressure and it will auto adjust based on the item that's in there. Most of the, well actually all of the manual presses, you will have to manually adjust your pressure when you change an item because each item has a different thickness and especially when you're changing the platens, it changes the amount of pressure 
that you're able to achieve. So we're laying our fashion film down. Now again, we're going to do a similar application to what we did on our cap, and we're only going to hit this for a couple seconds. And we are going to peel it off and layer our next color. Another reason that we only do that for a couple seconds, not only does it save us production time, but it eliminates the amount that the item that you're pressing can shrink by not putting uh, a ton of heat on it. Because what happens on some of these heat sensitive items is if you give the full application on the first color, it can actually shrink the item that you're pressing to where accurate registration is near impossible. All right, so we have our white on top of there. Not using the cover sheet because my carrier sheet on the white is covering all of the open uh, purple that was available in the unicorns. So here we're doing our full application, 300 for 10 seconds. All right, and I think um, a question or two came in. So Karen, if you can read those to us, we'll do our best to answer them. Could you go over again the vinyls, the different vinyls, and what garments they're good for? Okay, sure. Yeah, we can we can definitely do that. So there are uh, when it comes to stalls and selling vinyl, there are three main vinyls that you want to look for. The two that we're using today, and I'm going to go back to the table to talk because we'll move to our next application. Um, the two that we're using today, the first one was Premium Plus, and Premium Plus is designed specifically for items that require a low application temperature, so performance items. It has a little bit of stretch and rebound, and it's designed for performance wear. So that's CAD Cut Premium Plus for performance wear, applying as low as 280 degrees Fahrenheit. The other two items, the Uniontown Unicorn items that we printed, this is using CAD Cut Fashion Film. And Fashion Film is the go-to material if you were doing t-shirts or anything else that is 100% cotton or 50% cotton, 50% poly. It's kind of your go-to for t-shirts on Fashion Film or cotton items. If you're doing 100% poly, Premium Plus. If you're doing 50-50 or 100% cotton, you would be looking at Fashion Film. Now the third material that um, I don't have to apply today but is very important, especially if you're doing sports jerseys, is called thermofilm. And it's been the standard in the industry for decorating sports jerseys since um, the 1980s. So it is a thicker material that's designed to withstand a lot of wear and tear uh, on the field, specifically with football jerseys. So thermofilm would be the third one that you would look at for decorating. All right, any other questions, Karen? Okay, great. All right, so we have applied a performance hoodie and performance pants to bundle as a set to sell for $80 to $100 instead of just a t-shirt. We have applied a cap and a bag that we can bundle together for any team as well. Now we're going to move to shoes and then finally we'll be pressing a fan tank. So this shoe application, again, if you want to see more in-depth or more detail than what I'm going to be able to give you in the time that we have today, you can visit stallstv.com and just search for shoe or shoes, and you'll come up um, with videos that show you how to press those. So again, we're going to, we're going to change to an optional platen over here at the Fusion. We'll swing this out of the way. I'm going to put my shoes back on the table. And we are going to pull out our 8x10 platen. Just lay it on the floor here. And we're going to install a platen specifically to decorate shoes. This is the shoe platen. And we'll lock that in. And Karen, I'll have you go to the top shot so we can show these shoes getting loaded on. Okay, so two ways that you can load um, shoes onto this particular platen. If these had a collapsible, if these shoes had a collapsible back, we could load them on and decorate the back of the shoe. But since it doesn't, there's really too much curvature here to get an accurate application. And on these particular shoes, we also have a uh, seam or an additional piece of fabric that has been sewn um, onto there. So what we're going to do is load our shoes in this way to decorate the outside of the shoe. We're going to decorate this area. And the reason that I'm only doing uh, one of these at a time is because I don't want to generate, um, I don't want to give any opportunity for uneven pressure on both sides. 
So I'm going to do this side first. And actually, I need a pair of scissors here, Karen, to cut this apart. Do we have that? No. Uh, no, I don't want you to use your teeth. Okay. I can try and keep that off the press. So, I have two items, and I'm just going to try and apply the one. So I'm going to place this as center as possible to where I get even pressure. So I want to limit, I want to try to avoid any curvature that I have uh, back here. I want to get it as, as close to flat as possible on there. Now for this shoe application, we also need one additional piece. Um, in addition to the platen, we also want to use what's called a flexible application pad. Now a flexible application pad is just a super thin, stretchy material that is going to evenly distribute the heat across the shoe and keep the actual plastic in the shoe from melting on us during this application. Now when we add this flexible application pad to the application process, that also means that we need to add time because it is minimizing or slowing down the heat from getting to the adhesive that is on the bottom of our transfer. So normally, this particular material that we're applying, uh, which is a reflective material, would apply at 300 to 320 degrees for about um, 10 to 15 seconds. We are going to do this one at 300 degrees for 25 seconds. Again, that's to compensate for the flex pad on top of it, which is necessary to protect the shoe, but it also takes a little bit longer to heat the adhesive underneath of the transfer. So we're going to apply that. And while we have a 20 second countdown here, I'll open it back up to you guys if there are any questions in particular on anything that we have applied so far today. Anything coming through, Karen? Okay. All right, so we have 10 seconds left here. After this shoe is done, I see that we're kind of running close on time. Well, I won't apply the other one. We're actually going to jump to the fan wear item and make sure we get that applied to show you a little bit of a special effect material that takes you out of just doing t-shirts, although it's good for that as well. I'm going to show you glitter flake material on fan wear. All right. So our reflective transfer has applied right there. I'm going to pull this off and let it cool down. We'll get it back to the table. And I'm going to grab our next item. All right. So you can see the shoe there. Coming back. All right. So here we are going to apply this fan wear tank top. And for this one, I think we're going to do our 11 by 15 platen based on the shirt and the size of the design. So we'll get our shoe platen off of here. All right. And we're going to load the 11 by 15. Now, I asked you earlier what was your favorite optional platen that you have. Um, we didn't get many responses on that. However, based on the number of optional platens that we sell, um, the 11 by 15, the one that I just loaded on here, is the one that we sell the most of. So I would guess the reason that we sell the most of these is because it fits pretty perfectly women's shirts and youth shirts as well for that t-shirt market. All right, so we're going to thread our item. We're going to get our seam off the front. As you can see, it fits pretty perfectly. Our top seam and our bottom seam are both just barely hanging off of the platen, so I have a completely flat surface to apply on. All right. Just trying to get this straight on here. Great. Okay. And we're going to pull this around, give it a preheat. Going to decrease the amount of pressure that we have. So that puts us at a four. That'll work for our glitter flake material. And we'll place that on there. So I mentioned to you already the uh, Thermofilm, the Premium Plus, and the Fashion Film materials are uh, one of our most popular selling materials is this glitter flake material, uh, just as a special effect finish. So that's another one to consider, and it works well on anything that's 100% cotton or 50-50. You can also apply it to performance wear, but it does. it is supposed to apply at 300 to 320 degrees. 
so you just have to be careful with some of the items that you're applying to. If it's super heat sensitive, glitter flake might not be your best option for it. All right. Okay. Peel that off. All right. So outside of just t-shirts, it's good to keep up on industry or fashion trends. You can see here that we are working with a tank top. You might not think it's much uh, more than a t-shirt. However, this fashionable item has a much higher perceived value to the wearer than just a t-shirt would. So this tank top is going to go anywhere from $18 probably to $25, especially with that glitter flake material on it. So just by changing out the style of shirt, keeping up on trends, and being able to bundle different items, performance wear, caps, shoes, and um, actually anything that you can think of that will, uh, that's cotton or polyester that will fit on a heat press, we would love to see pictures of those things. So we thank you for joining us today. We're pretty much out of time. If you have any additional questions, we invite you to ask those at the Stalls TV forum. You can visit stallstv.com and go to the forum section. I want to thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next time.